Welcome. In this video, we're going to continue to find the volumes of solids whose uh, base is given as a region and then a description of their cross sections is also given. So for this example, let's consider the region R bounded by the unit circle. Find the volume of the solid whose base is this region and whose cross sections are perpendicular, excuse me, whose cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are equilateral triangles. The first thing we should do is get an idea of what this solid looks like. To do this, I included a tech demo in your Canvas course. And so here's the guided lecture for your module three, part one. And you can see tech demos one and two. I'm gonna click on tech demo one. And this kind of helps us see what these solids look like. So real fast, I'm gonna go with what's given here and I'm just gonna move the slices up to more of them. Trace slice, show slices, and that's kind of what this region looks like, 107 slices. There we go. So let's actually use what we have. We have a circle, which can be represented as the square root, in this case it's the unit circle, of one minus x quantity squared. And then here we can write negative square root of one minus x quantity squared. And then we want to change our bounds. Our upper bound is one and our lower bound is negative one. And again, that just comes from the bounds of the unit circle. Um, our slices though are no longer squares. They're equilateral triangles. So let's see what this looks like. And let's do less slices and zoom in. So this is what our region looks like. You can see the triangles really nicely here. And let's show even less slices. Let's just show seven slices. So each slice is this triangle that comes up from the base. So hopefully this tech demo helps you see the, vo the, the region whose volume we're actually finding. That said, let's go back to the calculus part of this. Let's begin with a sketch of the base. Here is a sketch of the unit circle, and that is the base of our triangle. And let me also label y it goes from negative one to positive one. So there's our unit circle, and that is what our base is. Now what do we need to actually do with this information? We need to use this information to figure out what the area of a single slice is. So when I say slice, I mean the, the area of a cross section. And that's because the volume can be thought of as just the integral of our area. So either of these integrals written either with respect to x or with respect to y mean the same thing. We need to find the area of a single slice, that is an area of a cross section, and then we need to integrate that area in order to get the volume. So let's sketch out what a cross section looks like. So as you can see here, I went ahead and sketched the equilateral triangle, and all of these sides are the same, all of these angles are the same, namely they're 60 degrees, and this line here is perpendicular to the base, hence the right angle symbol there. Now what is the area in this case of the cross section? Well, the area is one half base times height because we have a triangle here. So let's figure out what the base actually is. So I'm gonna label this part A and this part B and we wanna know what is the length of AB. Well, let's go back to the sketch of our base. And remember, we're told that the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis. So we can sketch out what the base would look like here in, our, in the region. And now, this tells us that this distance here is y, and this distance here is also y. So this distance is y, this distance is also y. That means the distance from a to b, so the length of a, b, is 2y. Okay, so now we need to figure out the height, and we need to use um, special triangles for that. So you might remember 30, 60, 90 triangles, and I'm going to quickly move these integrals just to make some space. Okay, so those integrals are moved aside now, and let's go ahead and recall or review. So a 30, 60, 90 triangle looks something like this. This angle here is 60 degrees, this one's 30 degrees, and then opposite the 60 degrees angle, or excuse me, the base of this triangle has length A. Opposite the 60 degree angle, this length is A root three, and the hypotenuse has a length of two A. So let's use that to figure out what this hypotenuse, excuse me, 
what the height is, and that's here, this is h. So looking at this sketch, we see that our base here on the 60 degree angle, which I'll label. So the 60 degree angle is opposite our height, so we're looking for this. Our base is y, so our height is y root three. Now we have to determine, are we gonna integrate with respect to x or with respect to y? Well, let's take a look at our base again for that. And as you can see here, and I'm gonna sketch this in red, this slice, if I were to make it a little thicker, its thickness that's in this direction is given by the change in x. That means we're integrating with respect to x. But right now our base and our height are both written with respect to y, so let's rewrite this. So y can be rewritten as the square root of one minus x squared. And that is this upper circle here, and that's this distance y. So that tells me that the base is actually equal to two square root one minus x squared. The height can be rewritten as root three times root of one minus x squared. Now I have enough information to write out the area of this cross section as a function of x, and that is given by one half times my base, which is two root one minus x squared, times my height, which is root three times the square root of one minus x squared. This simply becomes root three times one minus x squared. Now I can integrate and find the volume as the integral of a of x dx, and x runs from negative one to positive one. These regions, however, from here to here are symmetric, so I can just rewrite this as two times the integral from zero to one of my area. All right, so now let's actually put in this function here for area, root three times one minus x squared dx, and let's integrate. So you end up with two root three times this entire quantity x minus x cubed over three, evaluated from zero to one. This gives us two root three minus two root three over three, which simplifies to four root three over three. I hope this video was helpful.